All right, guys, so this part of the scoop project, we're gonna be assembling the handle and the back plate together. And later on in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to do the sheet metal portion of the project as well. Um, just make sure that everything is completely done, your handle is completely manufactured, smooth, and um, you double check with me to make sure everything is 100% checks out fine. Same with the thing, thing with the back plate, make sure everything is sanded smooth, um, you don't have any pencil lines that are left over, all your edges are rounded over, and you have this sanded um, according to expectations. So our plan of action here is we're going to take the handle and place it inside the hole, but first of course we have to glue it together and we have to double check to make sure that this thing is sticking straight out. So we're gonna need a few different things after our handle is manufactured and our back plate. We're gonna need a wet paper towel handy. We're also gonna need a rubber mallet. We're also gonna need a um, bottle of wood glue, as well as a square. First thing you'll need to do is you'll take your back plate, hold it so the hole is facing up. We're gonna put a squirt of glue in the very bottom. How much? I'd say about the size of a pencil eraser, a new one at that, just like that. Then we're going to flip over to our handle, put a small little squirt of glue on the very back of it. Make sure you do it on the flat end, not the domed end. We want the domed end facing out, not in. Put some glue on the very base of this thing. Then take your finger and very carefully just smear the glue around the base of the dowel rod, just like that, to evenly spread it out. Any glue that's left over on your finger, you can always use the paper towel to wipe it off. We're going to carefully place it inside the hole. Some of you might have a tight fit, some might have a loose fit, depending on how great or how good or accurate you um, placed everything and drilled it out. Take the mallet, tap on it a few times to seat it inside the hole. And then if you have some glue that seeped out around the edges, that means you did everything correctly and the right way. So we're gonna take the paper towel, wipe the extra glue out. And it's a lot better of an idea to address this right now rather than later. If you would wait for it to dry, then most likely this would be pretty, let's say it would be impossible, but it would be very difficult to get rid of. So wipe away as much of that glue as possible. You don't want that left over. Alrighty then, not completely done. One last thing I want you to keep in mind is we have to make sure that this thing is sticking out straight. It might look like it, but it might be off by a little bit if we don't check it for accuracy. We're gonna switch over things to our square here. I keep them in the woodworking cabinet. This is a square. The reason why we call it a square is because it's a 90 degree angle on the inside and the outside. And in manufacturing, they say um, something is square instead of saying something is a 90 degree angle. So it's kind of like just a short term for it. So the way to use a square, you hold it between, between your fingers like this. Place one side on the very bottom of an object. And then you want to hold the ruler or the straight edge part of it up to the edge of our dowel rod that's sticking out. If there's any gap, which I can see there's one at the very bottom way down here, we need to address that. We need to pull the dowel rod in the opposite direction to make sure it's straight. So it looks like ours is leaning a little bit. After we pull it a little bit, check for squareness. Looks like this side checks out. Flip it over, check the other side for squareness. Looks like that other side checks out as well. And don't forget the front. And it looks like our front, we have a small amount at the very top that needs to be addressed. So we're going to pull that in the opposite direction and it looks like everything checks out good for now. Um, the glue on your dowel rod and your handle, once you glue it together, it takes around, I'd say, 40 minutes to um, set up, and then complete dry and cure time takes, like for it to fully harden and to be as strong as it can, it takes 24 hours, so set this off to the side. So we're completely done with that part. And then we can come back to it later. So that's basically it for assembly. Just make sure that you check for squareness, um, throw out any um, or wipe off any glue when you're done and then throw out the paper towel. Alright guys, so the next part of our project we want to make, we're going to be doing some metal working. So before we do any metal working, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is metal is very sharp and can slice you and just cut you very easily when you're handling it. So it's just a good idea, a good, just a good rule of thumb to wear cut resistant gloves, which I have supplied in my room. Um, if you're not sure where they're located, just ask me. They're on the left side of the one drill press, um, right below the router table. So anyways, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this piece of sheet metal and we're going to be cutting it down to size and making kind of like a half moon shape with some dents in the very bottom. Of course, our name and a few other things are going to go in there as well. After you grab a piece of uh, aluminum sheet metal, we are going to line everything up and make sure the bottom of the template is nice and even and flat with a piece of metal, just like that. 
Keep your hand planted in the center so nothing moves and keeps some even pressure. Take a scratch off, scratch around the outside perimeter of this half moon shape. And then we also want to move our hand and cover these holes as well. There's five total holes in the bottom. Trace out all those holes the whole way across. And try not to move your template. After that's completely done, we have to identify, it's hard to tell the difference between yours and someone else's in this room because there's gonna be 25 to 30 of you in here at a time. So we have to identify it some way. We could use a scratch all, but honestly, I want you to get familiar with a different uh, tool that we use in my room. Um, I would not suggest using a pen, pencil, or marker because usually they either don't show up or they um, rubberate off. So we're gonna be using the electric engraver. Keep them in the metal working cabinet right behind me. So electric engraver, it should be on speed setting number three and the on switch is on the back. This little tip vibrates very quickly and you just use like a pencil after you turn it on and engrave your name on it. So the two things I need on here, well I guess you could say one thing, we need your first and your last name. We don't need any period, date, year, anything. Just first and last name, no initials. First name, last name, just like that. Next thing we need to do, we have these five little uh, markings on the very bottom where we want small little dents to be. So what we're gonna be taking care of is we're gonna be taking this here, which is called a center punch. Place the center punch right in line with that center of that small little hole that we have drawn on the bottom. Take the hammer, give it a nice little tap, and we're making a small little dent the whole way across the very bottom in all those marked locations. And the one thing I want you to keep in mind is we don't need to hit it hard. Just light enough, or I'm sorry, just hard enough that it makes a small little dent on our piece of metal, just like that. And you can kind of see they pop out on the other side a little bit. Last thing you need to do, as far as layout and design work is concerned, we're gonna be using this tool right here, which is called a marking gauge. Um, works on the same principles as a scratch all, scratches lines of metal, except this one, this is kind of like a free-handed pencil. This is kind of like a pencil and like a little platform or like a guidance system attached on one. And it has a little point on the end. And this little platform, when you loosen up the knob, moves back and forth. This should be set to a quarter of an inch. If it's not set correctly, or if you're just not sure, let me know. I'll be more happy to set it up for you. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to put this on the edge of the table so it's overhanging just a little bit. And we're going to use the marking gauge, like so, and just lightly drag it across. Now, my little tip for you is just to make sure that you hold it kind of horizontally in your hand. This little point here should be facing down and keep this platform nice and even with the edge of the metal. Don't tilt it down or up and try not to pull it out like this and like twist your wrist. We're just pulling straight back just like this. And of course in midair, this is a little bit difficult for me to do, but once you put it flat on the table, it's just, it's a little bit easier. So you wanna pull it toward yourself nice and slowly. It's even helpful just to point the tip away from you a little bit. So that should scratch you or get you, it should scratch a straight, nice, even line right across the bottom, just like that, okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some trimming. When we cut, we wanna cut out basically this whole entire like half moon shape. We do not cut the bottom. I'll just say that one more time. Do not cut off the bottom. We will need that for later. We're gonna break this down into two different cuts. We're gonna cut off the extra and the excess that's left over out here. And then we'll make our final cut on that line and finish it off a little bit later as we make our way through with the rest of this part the project. We're going to need some tin snips. There's a couple different styles you can use. Personally, I prefer these larger tin snips. They're easier for me to use and they're just something I prefer to use over the other ones. So we're going to pick one side, open up the snips, hold the metal with one hand, the snips with the other, and trim off one piece at a time. Just like that. Just small pieces. We're just trimming it, like giving it a haircut in a way. One small piece at a time. The reason why you don't make one giant cut is because if you try to do that, most likely when you try to turn, it'll start to bind the metal and it'll be very difficult for you to cut. And also, you always have to have one hand on the snips and one hand on your actual piece of metal. If you, maybe you're not that strong, or maybe even if um, you have, you just can't squeeze hard enough and you let your hand go and you start squeezing with two hands, what happens is the metal starts to turn and twist just like that and gets stuck and then before you know it, everything's stuck and you kind of scratched up your metal and you're not in a good situation. So I'd highly suggest that you do one hand on a piece of metal and the one hand on your actual snips. 
make your way around, just trim off the pieces little by little. Any scrap pieces that you have left over, try to keep them in a nice little pile. Cut resistant gloves will protect you from getting poked. Take them and you're gonna need to recycle them inside of the metal recycling buckets. And the recycling buckets that we use for scrap metal are painted orange. Do not put them in this metal, or I'm sorry, do not put them in the trash can recycling bin and do not put them in the buckets that are meant for scrap wood either, okay? So anyways, we're just gonna continue on and keep on trimming everything out, one small piece at a time. And don't rush through it, just slowly carve your way around, one small piece at a time. And for some of you, this will be very easy. For others, this is gonna be one of the more challenging parts of the project. So we're just trimming it out, getting rid of all that extra that's left over. Makes it easier for the final cut. Okay, it looks like I have a little bit more to do on this end, and then we should be pretty much good to go. All right. So now we have everything pretty much trimmed out, and that's pretty much like within like a three eighths or like a quarter inch to the outside edge here. We're gonna cut directly on the line. Same basic process, except we're cutting on the line and we're gonna cut one small little piece at a time. Do not go for the whole cut in one shot. You're gonna have some difficulties if you try to do that. So we're gonna cut directly on the line. Turn a little bit, cut off the extra. Repeat the process, cut a little bit, and turn, cut off the extra. And just work your way the whole way around, just like that. And it's tricky, but the more that you do it, the more practice that you get, the easier and it will be, and the nicer that your cuts will turn out to be. Okay, we're just about there, making it around the bend. And it looks like we are good to go. I'm gonna just take all my scrap metal, get rid of it for now, put it in the scrap bucket. All right, then we're left over with what we have here. We cut directly on the line. We have everything trimmed out, but we're not done just yet. We have one small little detail we need to address. These edges and corners are really sharp and jagged, and it wouldn't exactly be nice to be using a scoop project, and you hand it off to someone else, or you try to use it and you get cut open. Won't be too cool. So what we need to do is we're gonna be cleaning up our workspace, so bear with us in a few seconds here, a few moments, and we're also gonna be uh, sanding everything, getting it ready, so. So the next step of this process, like I mentioned before, we're going to be uh, cleaning up these edges and making them sort of a little bit more presentable and definitely safer for sure. So you're going to need two of these little clamping blocks and I keep them in the woodworking cabinet on the very bottom. There's like a seafoam green container that you can um, find them inside of. So we're going to put them on either side to protect the metal that way it doesn't get damaged from the vise. Open up a vise, have it so the half moon shape is facing straight up and down just like so. And we're going to be taking a file, and I keep files inside of the metal working cabinet on the right-hand side. Use two hands, and we're going to go in the direction of the metal. Just work your way around along that outside edge. And we're just shaving away any sharp edges or metal burrs that are left over. Start from the middle, work your way down. Once you get one side refined, flip it over, do the other side, same exact way. Start from the top and just work your way down the edge. This just brings down the sharp edges that way when it gets hurt when we try to use this thing. After you're completely done, one last thing we have to refine will be these little pointed edges right here on either side. So let's flip it over, address that as well. And we're just gonna work our way right along and kind of like push and turn it down at the same time, just like that. Once you get one side rounded over, just like what we see here, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Work your way along just like that. After you're completely done with that, now I would say it's somewhat safe to take your gloves off. It's still sharp, so you gotta be careful. And we will need to have our gloves off for this next part so we can check. We have everything smoothed out, but it's not completely safe just yet. We still have on these very corners here around the outside edges, there's like sharp little burrs that are left over. So what we wanna do is we wanna take these, um, just little container on the left hand side of the bottom of the uh, metalworking cabinet. You're going to grab a little section of emery paper and we're going to be sanding away these corners and these edges and the burrs that are left over. When you're doing this it's important to keep in mind that you want to have your emery paper at a 45 degree angle rolled up like a burrito and we're going to be sanding just like this. Don't grip it like this like a glove or like a taco or else you will start to sand and scratch your edges which is not what we want. 
Work your way around the outside edges just like this. Be careful not to scratch your metal or cut yourself. Once you're done with one side, flip it over, do the same exact thing to the other side. And a lot of my students are always like, Mr. Nichols, like, that's great and everything, but how do we know when we're completely done sanding our project? Like, when's it safe? When is it smooth? One test. You do the pinch test. Take your thumb, your pointer finger, pinch them together and pull out. If it feels completely smooth and there's no rough edges or nothing catches your skin, that means you're done with that section. If you pinch and pull and you feel some like ridges or like, like an edge, then most likely you need to go back through and sand it a little bit more. So I can definitely tell where I did and where I didn't sand and refine it. So you do that the whole way around. And when you're completely done, bring it over to me. I want to double check over just to make sure that I'm the second set of eyes to look over it, make sure it's fine. Do a visual inspection, just make sure everything is done. You have all of your edges nice and smoothed over. You have your name on there, electric engraver, your five dents, and the line on the bottom with the scratch all. Don't forget the line on the bottom with the scratch all. That's one thing some people sometimes forget. And one other thing I want you to keep in mind, it's a good idea, like, I know we just assembled our dowel rod handle and our back plate together. Leave that in your storage locker. Do not be handling metal and your wood at the same time because you'll get all kinds of metal flakes and just dirt and grime that comes off the metal on your wood. It'll turn it gray and black and you'll have to resand it all over again. So just try to keep those two, two things separate, okay? All right, guys, so after you're completely done with uh, finalizing and just getting everything ready to go, you're ready to do one or two things back here. We're at the box and pan break. And the box and pan break is meant for just a quick review, bending and folding sheet metal. It makes hems and um, nice edges and folds that are accurate. So pretty simple how this machine works. It's manually operated. So first thing I want you to keep in mind is, let me roll you over here so you can see a little bit better. There's a couple different components of the box and pan break. So first thing we have are these jaws that go across from left to right. So right here to the other side, you can kind of see a gap about right there. So those jaws, the way you control them, they move up and down. The way you control them is there's a knob and a lever right here in this area, right on the right hand side. In order to make those jaws go up and down, you grab the knob or the lever, pull it towards you to go down, push it up so it raises it up. Now, once your piece of metal is, I would say, right where you need it to be and pinched in those small, that small little area, then you take these two handles and this is where the bending takes place. You pull them up, just like that. One person bending a piece of metal at a time. No more than that, it just it gets, it gets to be a fiasco. It gets to be too crazy. So what we're gonna do is, remember how I told you a little bit earlier that we did not wanna cut off this small little line at the very bottom? This is the reason why. We wanna bend it and fold it over. So our quarter inch line that we made in the marking gauge, we're basically gonna line up that line with the edge of this jaw that comes at it like a 45 degree angle. So you're gonna need one hand that's gonna be operating the handle on the other side of these jaws to go up and down. The other hand's gonna be slowly and just accurately positioning everything in line right here. If you're off even by just like a fraction of an inch, your project, well your fold, not your project, your fold will be crooked. It's not gonna be straight. So you wanna just barely see that line from left to right, and then you should be pretty much good to go. Push this down until it hits the block of wood on the right hand side. And once you're ready, you'll take these handles, pull them towards you, and you're basically gonna force it up and slowly bend it until it gets to the very top, so you can't stop anymore. Slowly let it back down, open up the vise while holding on to the piece of metal, and then we should have something that kinda of looks like what we have here. A nice like little fold. At this point it's not completely done, we just have a 45 degree angle form, nothing more. We're going to stick it underneath in between these jaws, about right there. We're going to take the handle, push it down, and smash it flat. Then we're going to lift that same handle up one more time, and we should have a nice even little hem or a fold that looks just like what we have here. If there's a small little gap right in this area, you can always put it under a second time and smash it again, but that's exactly what you were looking for in the end from the box and pan break. Nice even like fold and it's like a rounded over edge. It's really nice to deal with. All right guys, so this machine right here, this is known as the slip rolls. Slip rolls, it's meant for curving and curling sheet metal. There's a couple of different things I need you to know about it before we get started. Um, first, just a few features so you're familiar with it. 
We have two different types of rollers on this machine. So I'm gonna wheel you around to the front so you can see a little bit better. So on the very front, about right here in this area, we have two rollers that go from left to right. These are called the feed rollers. The job of the feed rollers is they take your metal and literally push it into the machine. Kind of like a, um, they call them a strainer. Um, you can even use them, or like a strainer. It's something they use for like getting the water out of like wash in the olden days when they had washing machines that you actually had to wash um, your stuff on like a, um, in a bucket. So anyways, it forces your metal through. You do not want to adjust these knobs on the very front, the bottom ones that are painted yellow. Never touch this. Um, if you do, it's either not going to have enough friction to force it through, or it's going to be too tight and will actually start to split your seam, which is not what you want. Now on the back side of this, oh, and by the way, before I get started with that, on the side of this machine, we have a lever right here. When you turn this lever, it causes these to rotate, and the correct direction you want to be going is clockwise if you're facing the side of the machine. Turn it clockwise, and this will make these rollers go against each other and take your piece of metal and push it into the machine. Now on the back side of this machine, let's take a look here. We have a couple other, other different things. We have this roller that goes from left to right, right here. This is called the forming roller, so the feed rollers are up here forming rollers in the back. Now you're going to be on this side over here. When you push your piece of metal through in that direction, it's going to come through these rollers out through that little seam, hit the forming roller and it will start to bend and curve and curl just like that. Now before you get started, this machine's going to be set up properly like everything else in my room. Never assume that everything is set properly from the get-go. The only adjustment knobs you will be touching are on the very bottom of the back of the machine. We're standing on the back side, so we're talking about this knob right here. If we look to the other side, this knob right here. These are adjustments. They allow the uh, forming roller to move up and down. There's also two marks on the back side of this machine that tell us where we should be located. There's two marks right over here on this side. And if you look to the other side, there they are, right there. So we gotta make sure that this machine has the Sharpie mark on the feed, or I'm sorry, the forming roller, lined up with the bottom line on the machine itself, on both sides, this side, as well as the other side. The way you adjust those are these adjustment knobs. So when you take this adjustment knob and you turn it towards the classroom or this way in that direction, it starts to take that roller and it takes it and makes it go down. If you take it and turn it the other direction, it makes the roller go up. We have to start at the very bottom. All right, so anyways, let me put you back on the stands here. There we go. So when we're doing this, it's gotta be set up correctly. Those lines gotta be lined up on the very bottom. We're gonna take our piece of metal and we wanna have the fold facing down. Just keep that in mind, I'll say it one more time. Fold has to be facing down, not facing up. If it's facing up, you have to redo this process one more time. Fold facing down. And we want to feed it through just like this. That way we have one flat side on the right side and one rounded side or the half moon side on the left side. You feed it through just like this. So put it at the very end, grab the handle, start the crank away from you, turn it around, do the same thing in the opposite direction. It won't seem like much is taking place, but if you take a look at it, it's no longer flat anymore. It has like a slight curve to it. After we're done with that, we're going to go back here to these adjustment screws. We're going to do a total of two turns. One, two on one side. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Two turns on the other side, and we're turning in the direction of the door. So I guess if you're looking at it, you're turning counterclockwise. And we can have, um, just an FYI, we can have at least like three people max feeding their pieces of metal through at a time. Uh, one by one, it just takes too long, okay? So we're just going to repeat that process, feed it through. Remember the folds facing down, one side and the other side. Keep adjusting and repeating this process. What's happening slowly but surely, we're taking the metal from a flat state to something that is a little bit more bent. So let me get you in a better position so you can see this from like the back side. About right there.
Once you get to your final marks on either side, and it's pretty close, we're just gonna do like one turn. And at this point, your rollers should not be touching. Like you don't want your feed rollers and your forming rollers to be touching. Just one turn, just enough that the metal can squeak through. And we're just gonna repeat this process until, basically we're going for a U-shape overall. And sometimes it might be a little bit tricky, but you might have to push it through a little bit. And just keep on rolling. We don't want to go any further after we do that one turn. Okay, at this point, we're just going to flex it a little bit, pull it in. And there we go. We have our nice U-shape that we're looking for. And keep in mind, we have this on the outside. So we want to make sure that our fold is on the outside, not the inside. So when we were doing this, our fold was facing down, okay? So at this point, you're pretty much done with your sheet metal and ready for the next step. So stay tuned for that.